Hi right, guys, it is another gray gloomy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Imagine that, it is now, we are moving into the spring of 2023 here on, it would be a Wednesday, March 23rd, 2023 here in the great state of Texas, but good lord, I guess we could be in uh, the golden state of California. Good lord. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, believe it or not, I have been, I have been on the phone for almost three hours with Airbnb support. You're all doomer Airbnb super host dealing with Airbnb. Uh, anyway, come see me at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Uh, I think you can find Bugs in a Jar Farm on Airbnb now if you want to check out what's going on. But now that I'm done with that, I can uh, dive in to the doomosphere of the daily news. And I like this, generally like this group, this uh, play thing, I don't know what you, who exactly they are, called The Conversation, The Conversation on today's Yahoo News. And this is a little, uh, a little wake up call to that Save the Planet Lula down there in Brazil. You know, all of these little greeny lefties like at mongabay.com, you know, talking about how Lula is going to save the Amazon rainforest and the planet. Now, again, guys, you know, compared to Bozo Nero, uh, <laughs> sure, uh, <laughs> compared to Bozo Nero Warehouser Corporation, would be a better uh, guardian of the Amazon. You know, when your bar, when your environmental bar is set by uh, Jair Bozo Nero, well, how hard do you have to work? But we're going to hear from this fellow named Robert T. Walker, who's a professor of Latin American studies and geography at my alma mater, the University of Florida. And this is his reading of how Lula is saving the Amazon rainforest and the planet. Thank you, uh, Robert, for some honest reporting. We will see. I'm very curious to see. I, I sent this uh, over to Rhett at Manga Bay. Let's see what Rhett does with this story. <clears throat> The Amazon is not safe under Brazil's new president. A roads plan, a roads plan could push it past its breaking point. Yes. Conservationists breathed a sigh of relief when <coughs> Luis Inacio Lula da Silva, commonly known as Lula, won Brazil's presidential election in the fall of 2022. His predecessor, Jair Bozo Nero, had opened large parts of the Amazon region to business by crippling enforcement of environmental laws and turning a blind eye to land grabbing. It should come as no surprise that deforestation, you know, under Bozo Nero showed a sharp uptick. However, while Lula oversaw a more than 70% drop in deforestation, and I would put an asterisk half the size of the Amazon rainforest next to this oft repeated, uh, I, I would really like to study that. However, while Lula oversaw a more than 70% drop in deforestation during his first run as president in the early 2000s, 
the rainforest's future remains deeply uncertain. That is in part because Brazilian administrations, plural, whether, or, whether of the right or left, have all, have all promoted an ambitious project to boost exports and the economy <clears throat> called the Initiative for the Integration of the Regional Infrastructure of South America, otherwise known as URSA. Now, I don't know if URSA is a bastard love child of the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. I'm going to take a wild guess here that URSA uh, certainly is taking the Chinese Belt and Road playbook uh, format if it's not directly an offshoot and a partner of the uh, Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. But anyway, that being as that may, URSA, URSA, which is basically this one of these giant infrastructure initiatives, the initiative focuses on new on new roads, dams, and industry that can threaten the region's fragile rainforest ecosystem and harm the world's climate in the process. Uh, imagine that. At first glance, URSA might sound like progress. Its goal is to improve Amazonia's economy by developing its resources and establishing better access to global markets, can you say the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. To accomplish this, the initiative plans to rehabilitate and extend the existing highway system and build new dams, ports, industrial waterways, and railroads. However, evidence from my research in the Amazon over the past 30 years and by other scientists shows that new roads lead to more deforestation. Wow! Putting extreme pressure on the rainforest. Outside of the, you know, the the hilariously uh, named protected areas, nearly 95 percent of all deforestation occurs within three and a half miles of a road, or less than two-thirds of a mile, or about one kilometer from a river. Deforestation rates fell during Lula's first presidency primarily because Brazil expanded its protected areas program and enforced environmental laws. However, deforestation began to rise again during the administration of his protege, President Dilma Rousseff, you know, who is also a lefty. Both Lula and Rousseff furthered the URSA infrastructure agenda by building dams on the Madeira River and on the Zingu River, where the infamous Belo Monte Dam diverted stream flow vital to the survival of indigenous communities. <clears throat> they, meaning uh, Rousseff and then and Lula and Rousseff also downsized protected areas to make way for their projects. Rousseff even downsized Amazon Amazon National Park, the first such park in Amazonia. In all, 181 square miles were removed from federal protection 
close to 5% of the total area, the, the most scenic park landscape along the Tapajos River shoreline was taken to make way for dam construction. Now, back in office, Lula has signaled his approval for a key URSA project, the revitalization of Brazilian Highway 319, a federal highway between Porto Velo and Manaus. If this project is completed, well, when this when this project is completed, that should read, it will open the central Amazon basin to even more deforestation. Hmm. I believe this should cause alarm. Research shows too much deforestation could push the Amazon forest over a tipping point from which it cannot recover. No one knows exactly where that line is, but the vast Amazon that people picture today with its extraordinary biodiversity and dense forest would be no more. Such a catastrophe once seemed the bad dream of doomsayers. Uh, but there is mounting evidence that the forest is in trouble. So what is the Amazon tipping point we keep hearing so much about? The tropical rainforest sustains itself by recycling rain to the atmosphere to the atmosphere through evapotranspiration, which makes more moisture available. Rainfall recycling accounts for about 50% of the basin's precipitation today. Too much deforestation could leave too little rainfall recycling to sustain the forest. Scientists initially estimated the tipping point would occur once about 40% of the Amazon was deforested. That estimate has slipped downward over time given the intensification of fires and the onset of observable climate change in the basin itself. Moreover, the forest shows diminishing resilience meaning it is less able to recover from climate extremes. Scientists have already observed widespread shifts to more, to more drought tolerant tree species. Given this evidence, scientists have revised the tipping point to deforestation as low as 20 to 25% even if only one-fifth of the forest is lost, the remainder could quickly degrade into an ecosystem of fire-adapted grasses and shrubby trees that look nothing like the massive ones native to the rainforest. Deforestation across all the Amazonian nations now stands at a little over 16 in my view, this is far too close for comfort, especially with the momentum of the URSA program, you know, being cheerleaded by uh, Lula. So is there actually more than one tipping point? The deforestation problem is not the only pressure on the forest. The Amazon is also dealing with the heat and drought of global warming. Evidence suggests that global climate change may be enough to push large parts of the rainforest to the brink. One concern is that the dry season is getting longer, a shift that appears to be driven by global warming, 
This affects annual precipitation by reducing the number of rainy days and makes fire more damaging by extending the season when trees can easily burn. Currently, dry season lengthening is most pronounced in the southern basin. However, changes in the southern rainfall pattern can reduce precipitation in the wettest parts of the basin to the west. One estimate suggests dry season lengthening could cause a tipping point transition by 2064. Anybody who believes that there is still going to be an Amazon rainforest by the year 2064. What did he say? Uh, we're 4% off. I I anyways, 2064, my ass. So, what can be done? Averting Amazonia's looming tipping point catastrophe will require effort by the global community. In the past, Brazil has controlled deforestation through its forest code and by designating protected areas to step back to step back from the brink, Lula would have to begin enforcing the forest code again, which limits deforestation on private property. He would also have to have to persuade the Brazilian Congress to stop creating incentives for land grabs the taking of public land for private uses. Although Lula would have a difficult time reclaiming already grabbed land, expanding protected areas could reduce deforestation. Oh yes, obviously downsizing Amazonia's existing protected areas would have to stop. Finally, Lula would need to revisit the URSA program and pursue only those projects that bring economic development without excessive deforestation, which of course there is no such thing as Amazonian development without deforestation. That is absurd. That is a contradiction in terms, and this man knows it damn well. Oh, anyway. Uh, and then, of course, we have the hopium. So here is how the, the noble savages, they, they can save the planet. And if the noble savages can't do it themselves, luckily a forum for slowing global climate change already exists. It already exists. That would be the Paris Agreement is going to save the planet. So if Lula can't save uh, the Amazon and the planet, and the noble savages can't do it. We have an ace in the hole. We have the Paris Agreement. Yes, is going to save the Amazon and the planet. Yes. The Amazon Basin is now home to 35 million people, many of whom live in poverty. They have every right to desire a better life. And that is one reason that URSA has such a great deal of local support. However, while the initiative might bring short-term benefits, it also risks destroying the very resources it was intended to develop. And that could leave the region 
in a state of poverty that cannot be alleviated. Yep, yep, yep. There you go. Well, I guess Lula just don't get it. This Lula was supposed to save the planet, little dog. What happened? Lula is not saving the planet. Lula is selling the planet to China. Lula and everybody else. Oh, God. Anyway, with that, wrapping this up, I can finally go and finish. I have two more chapters left in Braiding Sweetgrass. Uh, I am uh, <laughs> preparing, I guess maybe even as early as tomorrow, we're going to have a Doomer review Braiding Sweetgrass. So any of you fans, any of you Doomer fans of Braiding Sweetgrass, uh, can look forward uh, to my review coming up maybe tomorrow. Get out there and enjoy braiding sweet grass while you still can. My guys.